Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you speak to us through it. Would you open our minds and our hearts to hear more of you this morning? Amen. So we are, as Anne said, this morning we are continuing our series on big prayers. And we're looking today at the Believer's Prayer, which is looking at boldness, signs and wonders. And to kick us off this morning, I'm going to start with a little video clip from Michael McIntyre, and all will be revealed why in just a moment. Who wants some? (laughs) I love that. Who wants some? Boldness, signs and wonders. Who wants some? I think many of us, if not all of us, in this room and perhaps watching online, uh, would call themselves a believer. Someone who believes in God and is practicing their faith in him in day-to-day life. Yet I wonder how many of us have prayed for boldness, signs and wonders this week. How many of us have been standing up going, I want some, I'll have some. I'll have some boldness signs and wonders. Or have we been in the row saying, I don't don't want some, I I don't think I want any. Actually, thank you very much. Maybe we've not even thought of it as a possibility. We may be believers, but are we praying the prayers that we ought to be praying? I was looking through my prayer journal to see whether I'd been praying for boldness, signs and wonders, and I found no references to signs or wonders, one reference to boldness, which ironically was, you know, I'll have a little bit more boldness, which I think is a bit of a contradiction of terms. But in this passage, we see Peter and John and their company praying for boldness, signs and wonders. And yet, if boldness, signs and wonders isn't part of our prayer life or what we're seeing in our lives, then we need to look at this passage and say, well, why is that their prayer? How are they praying for it? And what happens when they pray? And therefore, what does it look like for us to pray this kind of thing with expectation that we will see this kind of thing? I feel like Peter and John in this passage and the surrounding story, it's like they're the ones leaping up saying, I'll have some, I'll have some. We want some boldness, signs and wonders. But what is it that leads them to that place of wanting to pray for boldness, signs and wonders? So first of all, why is this their prayer? Well, For context, in Acts 3, we heard from Acts 4 just now, and in Acts 3, what led up to it is we've got Peter and John, and they went to pray, and they met a lame man on the way. There's a song about this. I'm not going to sing it. And the man was begging. He was the guy who sat at the temple gates. He was begging. He was the regular there. He was part of the furniture. And so, of course, as they come in to pray, he's begging them, saying, oh, have you got any money? Can I have some money? And, and they're like, oh, mate, sorry, we don't have any money, but how about the use of your legs instead? And, and so they pray for him in the name of Jesus. And, and this guy steps up and skips off walking and leaping and praising God as the song goes. So this obviously attracts a bit of attention for the guy who's part of the furniture sitting at the side of the temple begging is now skipping off going, woo, praise God, this is great. And so a crowd naturally gathers and then Peter takes the opportunity to preach about Jesus being crucified and resurrected and saying, this is the name in which the guy has been just been healed. Yeah, that's him skipping along. Yeah, Jesus' name. There, yeah, there he goes. And then he does an altar call, saying, well, who else? Who wants some? Who wants some? And then the priests and the Sadducees see what's going on. They see it's all kicking off, and this is where we caught up with them in chapter 4, and they are greatly disturbed. I love that. They are greatly disturbed by what is going on. And, you know, there's the lame beggar is skipping about. There's 
gathering people. Um, Peter, you know, who's not been asked to preach this morning, is preaching, so it's all absolute chaos. And so they do the only thing they can at that point, and they arrest him. They arrest Peter and John and take them to prison. And the bit that we missed um, in the middle of chapter four was Peter and John uh, coming up before the courts in the morning. And Peter gives another spirit-filled statement. And the leaders and the elders gather together and have a little discussion on, well, what can we do with them? You know, I mean, we can't, we can't really deny it because look, there's the guy still skipping about going, yay, praise God. You know, maybe they hope that having, having had a bit of a night to sleep on it, he would have been lame again. And then they could have just said, well, you know, you've disturbed the peace, but he's still skipping about praising God. So we can't, can't deny it. He's obviously still doing that. Um, and, but they really didn't want this kind of carry on to be continuing. But all they really could say was, well, uh, well don't, don't do it again. And Peter's like, but can't promise anything, might do it again tomorrow. And so um, they let them go, but on the way they threaten Peter and John. On this occasion, they escaped, no charges, no further jail time, no death penalty. Yet they have been noticed and the authorities are now watching them. The people in charge of the country and of the justice system are onto them. And they do not like what they see. Their lives could be made extremely miserable by these people. These are the people that Jesus upset by what he did. And he was crucified. So you, you can see where their threats are heading. They are not the kind of people who make empty and idle threats. And then when Peter and John leave, they go straight to meet up with their friends and to pray with the rest of their people, the followers of Jesus, and tell them everything that happened. And they pray. The experience they had leads them to pray together. The experience of a miracle followed by persecution and getting out by the skin of their teeth is to gather with their fellow believers and pray. Now, let me tell you something. If I went out into the town centre of High Wycombe this afternoon, prayed for someone and was healed, gave a sermon, got arrested, spent the night in jail, phoned Anthony to come and bail me out in the morning and got out, uh, then I would, I would not want to come to a prayer meeting that evening. I would be like, no, I want to go home. I want a fluffy pillow. I want to cry. I want to have carbs. You know, people would be allowed to come, but only if they were bringing carbs and chocolate cake. I'd be like, I need to eat all the food. You would really struggle to get me to a prayer meeting that evening to be like, let's pray about what happened. I would be like, no. I have had enough. I want to just go home and just be by myself and just eat and cry. And if, if you did manage to get me to a prayer meeting, maybe by lay, lay, laying a trail of chocolate cake, you know, come on, come on, it's really important. Once I got to that prayer meeting, I would want it to be about me. I'd be like, I have just been through a terrible experience. Do pray for me. Pray for my mental recovery. Pray for my physical recovery. This was horrible. Pray for the raising of the bail money. Pray for the raising of my lawyer who will come and get me off all of these charges. I would want to tell you about the horrors of the prison. I would want to, yeah, I'd be dining out on the story if I'm honest with you. After which I would want a month's leave of absence. And you wouldn't see me as I would go off on a long retreat to recover. If you were like, let's go out and do that again, I would be like, are you crazy? No way. I am off. Yet Peter and John, their response is to go together and be like, let's pray, let's have more, let's pray for boldness, signs and wonders. So often when we face challenges and persecution, it drives us away from each other instead of towards each other. It leads us to isolate rather than to be unified. And yet in the face of threat, what we see Peter and John and the others doing is they say, we need to come together and we need to pray. They don't go and isolate themselves. They come back together to pray. I wonder when your last 
crisis was. And whether you gathered with people to pray or whether you isolated yourself. And I think sometimes we've got a stigma around crisis. We don't want to appear that needy person who can't cope. But let's face it, we're all in need of the supernatural intervention of God. We need to come together and pray. During lockdown, my goddaughter was involved in a nasty accident and had a head injury. Um, she was three and they were away from home. And a group of us gathered, we couldn't gather in person at that time, but we gathered over Zoom every evening for a week to pray because the situation was really quite dire. And so every evening, a group of us, we would gather on the Zoom, we would pray for, a, pray for her, pray for a miracle and pray for her to be completely healed. There is power when we gather together. And we extended that invitation and some people came and others were like, oh no, I can't really come, it's not a great time for me. And you know what, I think they really missed out because they were like, oh, I'm praying, I'm praying on my own, you know, I'll pray, pray at a time that suits me. But, you know, those of us that gathered together, it was a really powerful time because we were able to bounce off each other's prayers. We were able to pray into the messages we'd been having and we were able to, um, to gather words and songs and verses and, and send them back to her parents each day. And, and we did that every day for a week. And on the final day, her dad joined us because, praise God, she was being discharged the next day, well on the road to recovery. And so that final day, we had a celebration but there was so much power in gathering together, even though we couldn't do it physically, of gathering together to pray. There is power when we gather to pray. How were they praying? Well, when they gathered to pray in verse 24, it says, they raised their voices together. They prayed in unison and they prayed the same prayer. They had the same response and the same focus. The word amen means I agree or let it be so in the Greek. And so when we say amen at the end of a prayer, we are agreeing with what that person is praying. And we are praying in unison with one voice. The other thing they did is they prayed scripture. They are praying Psalm 2 among other scripture and biblical truths. And there is something powerful about when we pray using scripture. Because not only are we praying with the people around us, but with the person who wrote that scripture in the first place. And because we know that scripture is God-breathed, it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, it's God-breathed and anointed. So we are praying a prayer given by God back to God with the people of God who have gone before us and prayed the same words as us. In the Psalms alone, we find prayers for joy and for praise, but also for grief, persecution, loss of hope. And each one points us back to a God who is in control. When Jesus is on the cross, he prayed the words of Psalm 22, written by David some 1,000 years earlier. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At his lowest point, delirious with the pain of the cross, when he couldn't summon up his own words, he prayed the words of scripture that he would have known by heart. I love that verse in Romans 8:26 where it says the Spirit helps us. We do not know what to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. By praying the scripture and announcing that God made the heavens and the earth, they are placing themselves back under his authority and under the omnipotence of God. They are resubmitting themselves to the God who made everything. And acknowledging God's lordship and rule, they are saying, you are in control of this. 
seeing as you made the whole earth, the heavens and everything that we see, you are therefore in control of us and of this situation. It stopped being about themselves and it was about the God who they were serving. There is power in gathering to pray and power in praying the scriptures. And in praying the scriptures, what they were praying for was an advancement of the kingdom. They didn't pray for their own safety and protection at that point. They were not praying inwardly about the experience they just had, but outwardly with an outward focus. The prayers they prayed completely disregarded their own safety. They were praying, we'll have some. They've just had some. We want some too. Let's see more. They were asking for great boldness. That word translates as complete. They didn't want a little bit of boldness. They wanted all the boldness. They knew that their witnessing might lead to death. Oh. Um, so they prayed not for safety, but for boldness. They knew they couldn't do it unless God was working in and through them. They asked for a measure of boldness which would outweigh the threats against them. And I think one of the biggest problems that we have is we do the bit where we say, oh, I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. I don't have the giftings, which is exactly what the disciples did. They were like, we can't do this. But then we stop there. We're like, I can't do it. End of. What comes next after we say, I can't do this, is to say, so give me your boldness in order that I might speak your name in order that we might see signs and wonders. We're so focused on our weaknesses and our limitations and knowing what the cost is that we don't get past the point of saying, I can't do it. We just accept it. We say, I can't do it. And of course, we can't do it on our own. It never ends well if we try. We need to acknowledge not only that we can't do it, but then ask for the boldness to overcome, to do it anyway, not on our own, but with the God who made the universe. The disciples knew that their witness could lead to death. They were very much at the sharp end here, but they prayed anyway. They prayed for more. And that's powerful right there. Now, we maybe know that there are lots of places in the world where it really isn't safe to be a Christian. And there is a church that is persecuted where you risk arrest just by turning up on a Sunday morning. And maybe we don't face a physical death here in this country. But I still think we face death, but I think it's a social death that we face. Our persecution may look like being outcast from our friendship circles, facing issues with family members who we disagree with about elements of faith, challenges at work, being known as the crazy Christian person, or having beliefs that people can't quite get on board with. Do we still pray for the boldness to keep going anyway? Or are we more focused on praying inwardly for the protection that we might go under the radar and have an easier life. The disciples were confident when they prayed, God, stretch out your hand so we might see signs and wonders. They were confident that they would see it done. They'd just seen the lame guy skip off. And so they knew God could do it again if they ask. Jesus had told them, if any one of you asks something in my name, it will be done in the name of Jesus. They had confident assurance. So that not only is power in gathering to pray, power in praying the scriptures and power in praying for boldness, signs and wonders. Now we may have seen signs and wonders, 
Maybe we've asked and not seen. Maybe we've not even asked. But I wonder, do we ask for the signs and wonders along with the boldness? Do we recognise that when we see the signs and wonders, we're going to need the boldness because things could start to get tricky? Are we trusting in the God who made the universe, who is ruler over every situation? If we pray for boldness, signs and wonders, he's got us. Whatever happens, he's got us. In a moment, I'm going to ask the question, who wants some? But before I do, let's just take a moment now just to pause, to ask God in our own hearts what we need to take from this. And then we'll go from there. So you might want to adopt a posture of prayer that helps you most. You might find it helpful to close your eyes. You might find it helpful to just hold out your hands where you are as a sign of being open to God. Father God, we just ask that whatever it is we need to take from this morning, you would be speaking into our hearts now. Lord, would you challenge us? If there's something that we're not doing and you want us to be doing, Give us the boldness to do it. first thing I want us to pray for this morning, um, I think there might be some people here who've been facing challenges and difficulties, maybe even crisis, and they've been isolating themselves. And we'd love to gather around you and pray for you this morning. So if that's you, if you're feeling May it could be persecution or it could just be a personal challenge or crisis that you just don't know your way out of. I'm going to ask you to be super brave, to stand up so we can see you and then we will love to gather around you and pray for you. You don't have to tell us anything about the situation. But as church family, we want to pray for you now. So if that's you, just take that step. You won't be standing on your own for very long because the people around you are going to gather and lay a hand on you. Thank you. So if someone's standing near you, do just come and lay a hand on them. It might mean getting up out of your seats if they're all in the same place. If you're still praying or being prayed for, carry on. That's fine. But I also just want to offer uh, another couple of words. Um, In a moment, uh, we're going to sing again. We're just going to press into this time and... Uh, But I just want to pray, if there's people who want prayer, um, to come forward for prayer. Uh, Two things. I think maybe there's some here who need a bit of boldness, or a lot, all the boldness, to take a step of courage where they've not taken a step before. So there's some of you, I think, where today needs to be the day where you step up and say, I'll have some. I'll have some. We'd love to pray with you. But then I was also, I think there might be some people here who are sensing disappointment from you've prayed these things, you had great faith and yet nothing happened. And so you've been, that's really affected you. You've really felt that sense of disappointment. Well, God wants to come and minister to you today as well. So if the prayer ministry uh, team can be ready, 
And if the band are ready to come and just lead us in a bit of worship while we continue to pray, then that would be great. And also, if you're still receiving prayer from the people around you, just carry on, carry on. So yeah, boldness, if you want to take that step, if you want to say, I'll have some, I don't care what it costs, because the God who made the heavens and the earth is in control or those may be facing disappointment. There's team ready to pray with you at the front if that's you, so do come on down if you would like some prayer.